Hi everybody, welcome back to the BizTech Academy. Steve here, and today it's a new company, and today I'm gonna to look at First Class Metals, or FCM as it's more commonly known. And as with all first videos on new companies, this is gonna be very much an overview, and I'm gonna look at who FCM are, what they actually do, and also look at the recent share price action. And I'll also give my initial thoughts on FCM as an investment. And more importantly, this is a precursor to an interview I'm going to hold next week with First Class Metal CEO Mark Sale as part of our CEO podcast series. And in this interview, I'm not only going to look at the history of FCM, I'm also going to look at the current portfolio of projects one by one, also look at the strategy of the company, its current financial position, and also the investment case for First Class Metals. And to this end, if you're a shareholder in FCM or you're contemplating an investment in First Class Metals and you have any questions for Mark, then please add them to the comments below and I'm more than happy to list these down and put these at the end of the session next week. And of course, before I start this video, I must say as always that none of this is financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor and everything I say today is purely my opinion. And if you want to be alerted when I do release the video with Mark Sale and you do like this video, obviously, then please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Any support you can give us is greatly appreciated. And one final point to reiterate is what I said previously, that this is very much an overview video. So if you've been following FCM for some time, a lot of the information I put in this video, you may well already be aware of. But if you are new to FCM or you're considering an investment, you might find this video useful as part of your own research. Okay, so who is First Class Metals? Well, FCM is a precious and battery metals exploration company with all of its projects, and there are several of them, based out of Ontario in Canada. FCM was first listed on London's main exchange in July of 2022 and was the brainchild of two finance professionals, James Knowles, who's now the chairman, and Aya Bodhi, who is an executive director. Between the founders of Mark Sale, First Class Metals has developed an approach to try and balance the commercial drive and the commercial objectives of an exploration company with an environmental conscience. Yes, of course, FCM wants to be commercially successful in its exploration and development of precious and battery metals, but it wants to do this in such a way that it has minimal impact on the local environment. In fact, First Class Metal states very clearly on its website that our ultimate mission is simple, to make discoveries, but we want to do so by creating viable exploration opportunities and challenging the status quo through means that promote stewardship of the land, contribute towards a stable climate, and integrate indigenous ideals whilst moving towards the decolonization of mineral development. Now, of course, the skeptics out there may well say that focusing too much on the environment is costly and is against the commercials of mining, but I'll be honest with you, I'm not sure I buy that. In developed countries like Canada, there are a great deal of regulations in place that control ESG and insist on responsible exploration and mining. And what FCM are doing here are embracing this and being proactive. Moreover, I'd argue that by doing this, this will ultimately reduce costs and also in favour with regulators when FCM is looking for drilling permits and potentially to expand their operations. I guess time will tell, but for me, I see this as a good thing. And I'll also broach this subject with Mark Sale next week and try and understand his view on whether he sees too much focus on the environment as a potential hindrance and even maybe a cost burden to FCM. If I turn to the project portfolio itself, all of FCM's projects are based in the northwest of Ontario. And at this point, if you're not aware of Canada and Ontario in the mining landscape, it's worth noting this. Ontario is constantly ranked as one of the best mining locations in the world. It has a great deal of resources in the ground, and this also means it has a great deal of skilled resource available to exploration companies. Of course, it's early days for FCM, but by choosing Ontario as their exploration location, certainly for me, suggests that there is a far greater chance of success than there would be if they chose other locations around the world. In terms of the project portfolio, this is made up of 10 claim blocks covering 300 square kilometres, and seven of those claim blocks covering 175 of those 300 square kilometres, 100% owned by First Class Metals. Note also that within one of these claim blocks, there is a joint venture with the Palladium One. I'm not going to cover that in detail in this video, but I will discuss this with Mark next week. There is an image of the various blocks on the screen now, but to avoid confusion, it's fair to say that of the nine blocks, there are four main claim blocks, that being Zigzag, Sunbeam, North Hemlo, Issa. And note that Sunbeam, North Hemlo, and ESA are gold explorations, whereas Zigzag is lithium. Now, it's fair to say that gold has its ups and downs, but if any of you have seen my videos on hummingbird resources, you'll know that I'm quite bullish on gold. 
I personally think that interest rate differentials between the US and the rest of the world will continue to grow through the rest of this year and 2024. And this will ultimately manifest itself with a reduction in the value of the US dollar. And of course, if the value of the US dollar does go down, then commodities and metals valued in the US dollar, like gold, should go up. And I wouldn't be surprised if we don't see well over $2,000 an ounce for gold as we go through 2024. And the knock-on effect of this, naturally, is that companies and industries that are associated with the commodities like gold should also see their valuations increase. But again, this is just my opinion at this point in time, and it's certainly not financial advice. And then sticking with the four main projects in ZigZag, this is lithium, and we know full well that lithium is on vogue at this moment. There are a lot of reports out there that say the globe is going to face a lithium shortage at some stage in the coming years, and therefore the price may well continue to increase. But I guess, a bit like gold, we're just going to have to see how that pans out. Now, I'm not going to go through each of the nine or even each of the four main projects in detail in this particular video. I'm going to leave that for my discussion with Mark next week. And in that discussion, I'm going to try and run through each one individually and try and understand them more in detail, but in plain language. So people that are not particularly technical, like myself, can make more informed investment decisions going forward. And hopefully, when we have that discussion, that will also help you with your own research if you are considering an investment in first class metals. That said, I will say at this stage that I am attracted to FCM's multi-commodity portfolio. I do like the fact that it has some sort of risk hedge, if you like, against different commodities falling out of favor or not being in demand at a point in time. It certainly means that any investment I did make would have a level of hedge in it as well, which I do like. Further, I really like the fact that FCM has planned to have four claims of drill-ready status by the end of this season. And I'll explore this also with Mark next week. I'm really interested to know when they will start actual drilling. Okay, if I now move on to the company structure, as I mentioned previously, FCM was listed on London's main exchange in July of 2022. And at the time of recording this video, the share price of FCM is some 8.2 pence with a market capitalization of something like 6.7 million pounds. But note that when the company was listed in July of 2022, the listing price was 10 pence. As you can see from the share price chart here, after the launch of FCM in July of 2022, the share price climbed steadily through the year and closed at the end of the year to some 17 plus pence. However, 2023 has been slightly different and we've seen quite a lot of share price erosion and barring a couple of spikes that happened through the middle of the year, the share price, as I mentioned a moment ago, is now just above 8 pence. I've looked at the RNS history for FCM since the launch to date, and I'm not going to go through every single RNS in this particular video, but my summary of this is the share price erosion from the start of 2023 is primarily driven by the issuance of new shares. There's no doubt that FCM as a company has progressed very well since its listing, but it's needed funding to do that, and I'd argue that's understandable. The result of this, however, is that the number of outstanding shares in FCM has increased a great deal since its original listing. At the original listing date, there were some 65.6 million shares issued. And at the time recording this, there's something like 82 million shares outstanding. This is something like a 25% dilution since the original listing in July of 22. Now, at face value, any share dilution is painful for investors. But let's be honest here. FCM is a very young mining exploration company. And everybody watching this video will know that investments in early mining companies is long term. And when I mean long term, I mean years. It's been just over one year since FCM listed on London's main exchange. And for me, the issuance of shares to gain funding to progress the business through that period of time is just the natural course of business. The other thing to note about the issuance of new shares is that all shares that have been issued have been issued at a level quite a bit above the listing price of 10 pence, which sort of throws a little bit of doubt about the 8.2 pence valuation of the current share price. And I'll come to that in a short while. For me, as a long-term investor, the more important question is twofold. Firstly, do I believe in first-class metals? Do I think FCM will be a commercial success? And secondly, if I do think it will be a commercial success, is the current share price a good entry point? Or if I own shares already in FCF, is it a good price to add to my shareholding? Now, before I finish, I'm going to give my thoughts on the answers to these two questions now. But I'm going to look at these in reverse order, and I'm going to start with the current share price. Now, is 8.2 pence a share for FCM a good entry point, a good share price? Now, of course, I can't answer that. But what I would say, and this is how my mind works, is that when you think about the 25% dilution in the share price through the share issuances, that takes the listing price of 10 down to around 7.5 pence. And therefore, I would say with the relevant news that has happened in the last 12 months, the progress that the company has made and the value add is put to the company, then the difference between 7.5 and 8.2 
isn't a great deal. And therefore, 8.2 pence is probably actually about right, if not actually quite cheap. Now, I know this is not a very scientific way of valuing the company, and it is mere speculation, but there really is no way of valuing accurately a company like FCM at this point in time. But I will say one final thing on the valuation. The current market cap is £6.7 million. Now, I'm absolutely sure that there's no way in the world that James Knoll or Mark Sale are deeming £6.7 million as the end game for FCM. I'm sure they're looking for multiple times that. And therefore, as long as you're a long-term investor, I think 8.2 pence is probably a pretty good price. Now, going back to the first part of the question as to whether I believe FCM will be a commercial success, I'm actually going to hold back answering that until I talk to Mark Sale, the CEO, next week. I do think the commodity mix is good. I do think the location is good. It looks like the management are very strong. But until I hear it from the horse's mouth, if you like, until I talk to him and ask him some questions, I'm going to hold back. And after that, I'll give you an eye answer in full. And on that cliffhammer, I am going to leave it for now. And I'm going to ask you again, if you do like this video and you want to be notified when I publish the interview with Mark, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. But in the meantime, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.